Hello and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Why am I talking like this? I, I don't know, so let's just stop and get on with today's review, which happens to be a review of Azerox Fatality Z270 Gaming ITX slash AC motherboard. Actually, that's the box. Here's the motherboard. I have to admit I do love Mini ITX motherboards designed for high-end hardware. They never seem to disappoint. When it comes to PC building, I'm at my happiest when I'm either building an incredibly large system in something like Thermaltake's The Tower 900, or something small in, say, the Silverstone Raven RVZ02. Maybe it's just me, but I find it very satisfying building a high-end gaming rig in something the size of a shoebox. And I'm not talking NBA player shoebox here either. Anyway, ASRock's new Z270 Mini ITX motherboard looks to be the perfect successor to their already great Z170 version. Upgrades include Thunderbolt 3 support, Intel Optane technology, Creative Sound Blaster Cinema 3 audio, and better Wi-Fi integration. Of course, you still get features such as USB 3.1 and Ultra M.2. All of this is crammed into a board measuring just 17cm by 17cm. As was the case with the previous model, ASRock has gone with a black and red theme, and this is common amongst all their Fatality branded boards. The majority of the board is black, with the exception of the dual DDR4 dims and the heat sinks. Speaking of which, the board is surprisingly heavy for its size, and some of that is down to the fact that the board's VRMs are cooled via a rather thick heat sink, which is connected to a smaller heat sink over the Z170 chipset via a copper heat pipe. For the most part, the board's design and layout is excellent. The power connectors are conveniently placed at the edge of the board, along with the USB 3.0 header and two of the six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. There are also three 4-pin fan headers, all placed at the top of the board for easy access. The CPU socket is reasonably clear. Well, actually, for a small form factor board, there's loads of clearance for those trying to stuff a larger cooler into a Mini ITX case. Helping to tidy up the board layout is a new Wi-Fi module. Previously, ASRock went with a mini PCI Wi-Fi card using a Realtek controller, which I felt was a bit of an oversight. Had they used an M.2 card, the upgrade path would have been much broader. Anyway, not making the same mistake twice, we find an Intel dual-bound wireless AC7256 adapter pre-installed. This uses an M.2 2230 card supporting speeds at up to 867 megabits per second, while it also supports Bluetooth 4.0. Flipping the board over reveals an Ultra M.2 port supporting the 2260 and 2280 form factors. M.2 drives using either the SATA or PCIe interface are supported. PCIe Gen 3 models can be fed up to 32 gigabits per second of bandwidth. Please note though, if the M.2 slot is occupied by a SATA type M.2 device, then the first SATA port will be disabled. Finally, as you would expect, NVMe SSDs are supported as boot devices. Back on the front side of the board, you will find a Realtek ALC1220 codec providing 7.1 channel HD audio. The implementation here does come with a huge list of extra features. Features such as the Nichicon Fine Gold Series audio caps, 120 decibel SNR DAC with differential amplifier, TINE5532 premium headset amplifier for front panel connectivity supporting 600 ohm headsets, isolated PCB shielding, individual PCB layers for the right and left audio channels, gold audio connectors, and support for Creative Sound Blaster Cinema 3. So that's a pretty impressive audio solution for a mini ITX motherboard. So that pretty much covers all the important features. Let's take a look at that UEFI BIOS. Upon entering the BIOS, the easy mode loads first, and here you can find the basic information and options such as the processor type and frequency, memory related information and system vitals such as the operating temps, voltages and fan speeds. For experienced users, it is possible to access the advanced BIOS by hitting F6. Alternatively, for future, you can disable the easy mode and just bypass it entirely. The main BIOS layout is very similar to what we have seen from the Z170 boards featuring a fatality theme. Most of the fun will be had in the OC tweaker menu, though there are some useful things in the advanced and tool menus as well. When it came time to overclock, I jumped into the OC tweaker menu, set the CPU ratio to all core, and then raised the CPU's clock multiplier from 42 to 49. After that, I entered the voltage configuration submenu and set the voltage mode to fixed and then applied 1.33 volts. After that, it was simply a matter of saving the changes and rebooting the system. 
Now in Windows, we had a 100% stable overclock of 4.9 gigahertz on the quad-core Core i7-7700K processor. Not bad for a little ITX motherboard. Not bad at all. Finally, I installed the Samsung SSD 960 Pro 1TB in the M.2 port on the underside of the motherboard and ran the AS SSD benchmark. The SSD performed as expected, providing a read throughput of 2.8GB per second with a write throughput of 2.1GB per second. As for gaming performance, this little mini ITX motherboard will perform like any other Z270 or 170 motherboard, uh, and that's really true for any 100 series or 200 series motherboard. Actually, that's a good size comparison there for the two boards, if, you, if that's in focus and in the shot nicely. Anyway, for a long time now, the chipset and by extension the motherboard haven't really been performance-defining bits of kit. Ever since Intel released, I think it was Sandy Bridge back in 2011, all the functions of the North Bridge now reside on the CPU. Things like the memory controller, which used to impact performance, are now all on the CPU. This means unless you're testing multi-GPU performance, benchmarking a motherboard's gaming performance is a bit pointless. The other aspects of the Z270 Gaming ITX that I would have liked to test are the audio and wireless networking. Right now I don't have the correct gear or a database of results to compare with, so this is something I'll have to add down the track. For now though, I think it's pretty clear that this little ASRock motherboard is extremely capable. I had no trouble pushing the Core i7 7700K to a 100% stable overclock of 4.9 GHz, and this matches the best frequency we've been able to achieve with this processor yet. The SSD performance was also very good. I had no trouble getting DDR4-3600 memory to work, and that's the fastest memory I have on hand right now, though ASRock does state that the 4000 MHz stuff works just fine as well. At the time of putting this video together, ASRock's Z270 Gaming ITX is yet to go on sale. Uh, the previous Z170 model is selling for $175 US, so I feel like if this one can come in for around that price, then it's going to be great value. Overall, I really do like this motherboard, and I can't think of anything that I don't like or would change. Maybe a second M.2 port on the back would be cool, but I'm possibly being a bit greedy with that one. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll catch you on the next one.